Crossroads Media. This is ridiculous. This guy makes no fucking sense, and it's amazing, and it's a joy to watch. While Mo Bamba believes it's going to be his night when he drills seven of eight from deep, which good for him, when Joel goes, you ain't going to do shit in the second half, and then that third quarter comes around where the Sixers somehow scored 47 points in the quarter to take away the 10-point deficit going into halftime. That is absurd. And it all starts because of the big man dictating the pace of play. Imagine not wanting to play with Joel Embiid. Imagine being Ben Simmons, the loser that you are, and seeing what a professional athlete is all about. I always date back to, when I watch this guy play right now, I date back to what he looked like at Kansas. Physically, when it comes to just his body structure, and then his game, which we knew there was a ton of potential, but think about how far he has come, how willing and determined he was to get to this point, and so much sweat and tears goes into it, and now it's really playing out right in front of his eyes, and look, you need to lose to be motivated. You lose to Toronto. You lose to Atlanta, and then go through this Ben Simmons stuff. You know, one thing I have to admit is, I believe that there's something to be said about the growth of Joel Embiid, and what we saw Ben Simmons do to this entire fan base and to the NBA world, and that was something that Joel Embiid specifically used as he bottled it up internally to drive him to take that bigger step. Now, he probably still would have been lethal, still would have been elite, 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 because not winning the MVP trophy probably upset him as well, and that was something else that he used as motivation when he was in the gym and getting better at his craft. But just the fact that Ben Simmons let everyone out to dry, he, he, he left everyone behind him, and basically gave the double bird to every single individual in this city. You don't think Joel goes, <laughs> okay, you <laughs> here we go. Here we go. And it's sensational to watch this guy play. The standing ovation when he goes to the bench. How about the roars when he hit that big time three at the back end of that third quarter for I believe it was his 47th point of the night. <laughs> 27 minutes! 27 minutes! Spare me that the Orlando Magic stink. Because guess what? There's a lot of teams and a lot of players that play the Orlando Magic, and they ain't scoring 50 and 27. They ain't grabbing double-digit push. Oh, by the way, couple blocks, three to be exact, one steal. That's right. That's right. So it was just pure unbelievable dominance and it put a huge smile on my face and it's one of those moments where one you never forget it remember when he had 50 against Orlando of course that was insane and then two you know I always when that stuff happens and you appreciate the moment it doesn't matter who the opponent is that's in Insane. Insane. And you know it's insane when someone like Joel, and normally we talk about this in the other way. When he has 28, we have to defend how good 28 is because we're so accustomed to seeing Joel drop 34, 36, 37, 38, right? So when he has 28, he still was very, very efficient and very important and very crucial and very monstrous to the outcome of the game. But we've seen him do so much. This is... Holy shit, we're so used to him dropping 38, 37, 39. The fact that he does 50, it puts it back in the, whoa, oh my God, oh man. Right, so it's almost the opposite. It's that overwhelming of, just a reminder, by the way, just a reminder. So it's sort of the opposite light, the opposite direction of it, if that makes sense to anyone. It makes sense to me, but I can understand how maybe that is a little bit of a, 
interesting way of thinking about things. Regardless, though, uh, I'm just I'm so proud of what Joel did. I have to flirt in there that Tyrese Maxey had 14 points, and he definitely helped out big time. Tobias was efficient for 8 of 13 for his 21. But at the end of the day, with all due respect to those two individuals, it was the Joel Embiid show in South Philadelphia. It definitely wasn't Drummond, who was missing dunks and the balls hitting the back iron, or Furkan Korkmaz, who's turning the ball over in his first handful of possessions with the ball in his hand. Right, Niang had a couple whoopsie moments out there trying to make a pass. It goes flying into the stand. So you had your problematic issues, and, and that's why the Sixers were in the position that they were to start the game, where Joel, who was efficient as hell, by the way, gives you 20 in the first quarter. And they finished with 25 points as a whole. You couldn't stop the man. Every time he had the basketball. It's either hitting a mid-range J face up. And that's the scary part about it. If you're a defender, what do I do? What do you want me to do when Joel Embiid faces me up? Because he has the ability to drive and get a, 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 an inch from the basket. I was going to say a foot, but no, a, an inch, a damn centimeter away from just touching it off the glass or basically putting it in himself. Or he'll jab step me, or he'll spin around jumper me, or if you want to send the double team, he'll find his open teammates. What do you want me to do? Yeah, I don't blame you for being nervous. I don't blame you for being scared. I take a charge, personally. I take a charge from a seven-footer. What do you think? Joel, in transition, running full speed, broach. I swear to God, if I look over at the referee and he hits me with the block... Lose my damn mind. 